Splatoon 3's side order DLC is now out, and with that, some people out there are having a hard time getting all the way to the end or finding out some secrets to help them play better in this DLC mode, where your ultimate goal is to get to floor 30, which is at the top of the Spire of Order. The problem is, you might be having some troubles getting to the top, and even if you aren't, it might be taking you a very long time to fully complete this game, which is going to the top with every single weapon in the game, which is a total of 11 unique weapons, which could take you a very long time. But I'm here to give you guys some tips and tricks to speed this process up, as I'm pretty much already done and I have about one weapon left, and it didn't take me more than about a day and a half to two days of playing off and on. So I'm going to kind of talk to you guys about how to make this process quicker and how to never die in Splatoon 3's side order DLC. So I want to kind of work backwards and talk about the enemies first, because the enemies is what kind of makes or breaks your runs. If you know how to take them down correctly, you'll never have a big issue. And I want to start off with the Drizzling Capriccioso Gelatin. Uh, once again, these names are very weird, so hang with me. Um, but this is the Sprinkler Gelatin. Now, this sprinkler is way better than the actual sub in the game, uh, but yeah, it covers lots of range. These are the flying fish in the air, if you guys aren't familiar with them. They are going to soak the area over. You're going to want to get rid of these guys as quickly as possible, because especially in splat zones, they are going to always secure the area just by being in the box for about one to two seconds. So honestly, lots of the splat zone challenges, you don't even need to focus a whole bunch on the other enemies. Just focus on those flying fish that are coming towards you. Get them out of the way immediately. Another enemy that can be annoying is the battering lento fish, which are the big boys that you see rushing towards you. Now these guys can also carry enemies on their head on the later floors, so you'll want to take out those enemies first. There's a lot of times if you take out the big bento, the little enemy will jump off and go into an immediate attack phase. So it's always best to take them off the head and then work on the big guy. Something else about the big fish is that they will always be attracted to the 8-ball. Once you knock the 8-ball out of its spawn, they will go straight for it every single time. They'll actually even leave you alone just to go for the thing. They're like a little dog, but a lot bigger, I guess. But yeah, use this to your advantage. If you're getting overwhelmed, especially by the big guys, shoot the 8-ball out of the way and let them go play with it while you clear out some enemies. Also, if you're wondering why the 8-ball is not going into its slot, it's because these big lento enemies are actually knocking it around the stage somewhere so it's your job to kill them all, get them out of the way in order to make sure your 8-ball can go into the slot. Using this knowledge makes these 8-ball missions extremely easy, and also considering the fact when you hit the 8-ball, it gets a little burst of energy, covering itself in your colored ink and spikes, and it can penetrate almost every enemy with a one-shot. Use this to your advantage as you can just run enemies over with this thing. For the spawning Accordo enemy, these are the giant creepy fish with a whole bunch of red orbs on its head. Now, I've seen a lot of people actually had no clue what this enemy actually does, but it can be one of the most detrimental enemies to your entire run. Yes, it can end runs because you don't know what's happening with this enemy. It's shooting little baby bomb fish at you, and these little homing fish will chase you around the entirety of the stage and cause some pretty bad hefty damage to you. So it's always important to get rid of the mama first, which is the giant fish with the orbs on its head. In order to get rid of this fish, you have to shoot all the orbs off of its head, where the homing attack will prove very useful here. But now that all the orbs are off, it can no longer fire homing shots at you, and it will detonate, exploding all the nearby gelatins as well, which can definitely save you in a giant crowd. So if you're getting bombarded by these weird homing fish from across the stage, you'll know that one of these enemies are on the stage somewhere. And yes, they can follow you from the other side of the stage, even when this fish doesn't see you. So make sure you track this thing down and find them if you see homing fish coming towards you. I also wanted to throw this one in real quick is when you see the gush fish, which have the white hard shell bodies, do not shoot their bodies, nothing will actually happen. Instead, shoot the rock that they are spewing out of their mouths because inside the rock is some type of sub weapon. Whether it's a disruptor or a splat bomb, it will fall down into their mouths, detonating them. So yeah, this is where also you will love to have homing attack. I will get into that later. There's a couple of life-saving enemies Enemies, I like to call them because they can literally save your life in a round. You'll see the big spring jumping fish where you can actually jump off of their dead corpse after you defeat them. When you defeat them, they'll actually leave a little peg on the ground which you can swim or jump into which will launch you up in the air to get you out of the area and even cause a little bit of an explosion on the ground to destroy the nearby fish. But whenever I see these guys in a crowd, I beeline for them first or if I'm getting jumped by a group of enemies, that's the first one I'll kill in order to hit the spring and blast out of there while always killing the enemies around it as well. And same thing goes for whirling etc. 
Accelerando, which are the little dreidel enemies. When you defeat them, you'll want to shoot their head. As soon as you pop off their head, they'll turn into a usable dreidel on the ground, which you can then kick, and it will devastate anything in its path, normally one-shotting every single enemy. And they also do a ton of damage to the teleporters as well, which can help you to take those out faster. But if you're in a big group, once again, aim for these guys or the spring guys in order to clear out a path for you to escape. Do not worry, I will give you guys a warning before the final boss, so you don't have to worry about that right now. But one of the bosses being the asynchronous Rondo, which is a giant spire where you have to take out different portions of it, it has some secrets to make this a lot faster. For one, do not go underneath this thing because it will lift up and it will shoot tons of enemies and spawn them from underneath. You don't want that problem. Also, hide in the lights. If the lights actually catch you, they'll throw more enemies at you and also the sub weapons that are actually on the screens of the enemy. If you pay attention, you can see little TV screens that show a sub or a special that it can chuck at you. So keep that in mind before it chucks them out. Also, listen for its weird scream. It will make a weird scream and start spinning really fast. That is your cue to hurry up and get out of there. You want to run all the way back to the outer parts of the stages because there's a good chance it's going to send tons of weapons or some type of crazy attack at you. And also, your goal is to hit the faces on the machine, but if the face is continuing to spin around and you just need a couple more damage in order to knock it out, you can still just shoot the rail. You don't actually have to shoot the face or wait for the face to come around, just shoot the metal rail that's spinning and you should get just enough damage to take them out. And when it comes to pinging Martial, which is the giant orb that rolls around the stage, you'll want to aim for the faces which do a lot more damage, but you can still shoot any part of the ball, it just might take a lot longer if you decide to not shoot the faces. Also, if you roll the ball into one of the black and red bumpers around the stage, as soon as the enemy will land, it will cause a shockwave on the floor. Remember to always jump over this, but rolling it into one of these pegs on the floor also causes it to do some type of attack. So, so when you're firing at this boss, make sure you fire at an angle that's away from the pegs and kind of roll it around them if you can. Also, when it gets very small, it does matter where you shoot it, because if you start shooting towards the bottom, you'll pop it up in the air. So try to shoot it towards the top to keep it on the ground, because once it's flying through the air, it's really hard to catch up to the thing. Now let me give you some advice as far as your kits and loadout. So for specials, I always love to go with either the triple ink strike, the re-slider, triple splashdown, booyah bomb, or wave breaker. These are really good specials that can get you out of trouble. Lots of the time you'll get overcrowded by enemies and you need something to either just bounce out the way or something to detonate all the enemies in a cluster right by you. And I found these to be the most useful. Now wave breaker is a strange one, but I found it to be really good in situations as like putting a wall up for yourself. Just throwing it on the ground can kind of create a barrier where the enemies will run into it. And same thing with the subs as well. Any type of sub weapon that can block you out, like the splash wall that can keep enemies from penetrating you, or you need to just take a second in order to regain your ink and chill in the corner for a second. Any of these would work really well. Personally, I would always go with Booyah Bomb or Splashdown. Both of these have worked miracles for me and saved multiple runs. Remember, you can also exchange yours for one in the vending machine. So make sure you visit those vending machines and look at what specials they have for sale. For color chips, here are some of my favorite ones to use and it helped me to plow through floors. For power, you just want anything that gives you better firing damage or firing range as well. There's ones for just straight up power, there's ink damage, there's firing speed, rate, and damage. So make sure you just take advantage of all those and those are ones that I love to flock to whenever they pop up. For support, always, always look for homing shots. They save your life with any weapon. I mean, seriously, if you just fire in a you know general direction of an enemy, your shots will always land on a nearby enemy. This works exceptionally well with the charger as a lot of the time you can just one shot every enemy and with having homing attack on, it helps so much with the little pieces of enemies that you need to take down. Like the one that spawns little you know bomb fish, you can actually just homing attack onto the little orbs on its head and you'll never have a problem trying to aim at every individual one. This is such a good perk, I cannot stress it enough. Look for this specifically. The only other ones I've found useful for support were weapon specific ones, like ones where you had shorter charge time for like the charger or maybe even your splatling. These were very helpful, but definitely homing attack, look for them. For the range chips, simply go with anything that gives you more range, like the main range is a really good one. Piercing is really good as well, helping you to defeat some of the stronger enemies off the gate. Not to mention piercing shots help a lot with powerful enemies like the panicking Alamambo fish, which actually sprint around the stage. Lots of the time you can like one shot these things. Combine piercing shots with homing attack, you're in for a treat. 
but also maybe you can pick ink attack size as well that just helps you to have you know more spread more range for mobility chips i would normally do like roll knockback is pretty good but mostly just swim and running speed not too many of these are super useful in this game and i normally stayed away from them for the most part but yes swimming away faster can be pretty good i normally stayed away from lucky as well but armor drop can be good if and only if you have the upgrades for it now you'll have to upgrade your overall armor back in the beginning outside the tower with marina because as soon as you start the game with your base loadout you can only pick up one set of gear which it doesn't even really tell you that so yes make sure that you have that filled out by marina by moving up to level two or level three so you can carry more gear before picking this one but also disc drop is very good as well because once you pick up those three pieces of a disc pearl will actually let out a screech that will wipe off every single enemy from the stage and it will actually lock and freeze all the portals so no enemies can come out giving you like 10 to 15 seconds to go around and take out as many portals as you can it's really good now for drone chips lots of them are still locked from the very beginning and you have to spend pearls on them once again in order to use them so it's best to you know make sure that you unlock as many as you can before you can even get the options to use some of these chips my favorites are the drone ink strike the drone sprinkler and the drone killer whale as all of these are pretty effective considering the fact that it's like subs and special weapons being fired out from the pearl drone while you're also firing out your specials and subs and your main weapon so it works almost like a 2v1 against a lot of these enemies so now for marina's hacks when you spin pearls you can use hacks in order to upgrade your overall gear of the character from the beginning one thing that you need to do is max live so you can make sure you don't fall down from the top of the tower you can do at least three this should secure your safety pair this with 15 slash 25 floor vending machine perk which will always give you a vending machine on those floors and you can always buy more lives in order to fill those slots as well and you can fill it right back up to three lives if you have one left you can also find some of those pearl drone unlocks at the bottom of the list so that way you can get chips for those power-ups and you can also find things that are really good like damage reduction max armor which lets you put up to four pieces of armor on broken armor jump that can shoot you up in the air and get you out of danger and eventually you'll see a press y at the bottom right of the screen for retry where you can pay pearls in order to retry a journey that you already took in the past and failed and never got to the top it will actually take you right back to the floor where you failed and you get to continue with all the new upgrades and lives that you have so please do not go back and try to do a weapon that you've already tried and failed in order to get all the weapons done in this entire mode it would take way too long if you failed some in the past push that retry and spend some of your pearls to go back up especially if you were very high not to mention there's also a continue perk which allows you to pay mem bucks in order to continue going if you lose all your lives there's a lot of ways to stay alive in this game take advantage of as many of them as you can and real quick before we talk about the final boss make sure that you play through this entire 30 floors with every single weapon because when you do it one time with one weapon all the way up to level 30 that's just once and you get a kind of part one of the ending there is a true ending with some type of like extra thing at the end i'm not going to spoil it or anything like that but yes you're going to have to play through all 30 floors with all 11 weapons which is going to take a while and yeah just keep doing it you'll eventually get there it might just be very time consuming uh but yeah give that a shot now i am going to talk about the final boss but this is the end of the video if you don't want to hear about it but this is to help people that might be struggling with the final boss in order to finish their run and i'm gonna to try to make this a little easier on you by giving you some tips this is your last warning okay into the final boss now we move on to the final boss the overlorder or technically smallest where you have to fight this little guy 11 times it is going to get time consuming it is going to get very annoying but it's best to know what to do so that way you can maximize your potential here and get done with this boss as quickly as possible so you can jump right back into the tower and do it yet again but to take this boss down you obviously take down the orbs on the outside which are the spawners and then you attack him in the middle but there's some things to be wary about and some ways that you could easily get knocked off your path he will use different specials to try to attack you and most of them are pretty easy to dodge some of them can be very annoying like for instance his killer whale lasts a very long time and it follows you for a very long time in order to get away from this for sure especially when there's other enemies attacking you just keep painting in one single direction and keep going around him in that same direction do not go back do not change directions just keep swimming because if you don't as you can see you will take damage if you try to get greedy just keep swimming 
swimming around him and you won't get hit by this attack. Also, do not be afraid to use the ink rails on this platform because you can actually hover away from all the enemies or reposition yourself on the other side of the stage where you can try again in a different point. Because if you keep trying to force something in one part of the map, you are going to die. There is a new attack as well where he'll shoot up four giant tentacles. If you're too close to him, he'll actually always do this attack. But if he does hit you with them and knocks you up in the air, it is not an attack. You're okay. Just dodge it as you're flying through the air and just fly to the other sides of the tentacles. Do not be in front of them because they will drop and crush you. Just stay cool and calm and you won't have too much of a problem with this boss battle. Do not push things. Just wait until it's your time to strike the portals and you should be good. But that's the information I have for you for Side Orders DLC. It's not too difficult the more you play and the more you figure out the enemy patterns and also the patterns of the different stages that you'll be on because a lot of them are just repeats. You'll also remember the stages that you completed because any new stage will have question marks so stick with the stages that you know until you can get a good comfortable lead and you know how to take these guys down and uh, don't get greedy. If you really want to complete this challenge of using all 11 weapons, go with the missions that you know and pick the easier ones for now. But if this video was informative and it gave you some advice and helped you out on your runs, make sure you leave a like and subscribe to stay up to date on all things Splatoon 3 and Nintendo in general. And like always, I'll see you all on the next one. See you guys.